All right. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining uh, this session uh, about avoiding the digital nemesis. Uh, it's something you probably never heard about. It's something I've thought about and uh, I had a correlation or a relation with the, the medical nemesis article of Ivan Illich in 1974, which is an article which actually, in the way I, did, I summarize it, is uh, an article saying that if we look at the society through a medical lens, then everything becomes medicalized. And in some sort of the same sense, I see things happening now with digitization. If we look at healthcare or, or at society through the digital lens, you see all kinds of possibilities or opportunities, while the real question is, does it actually fit a need in practice? So are we fulfilling the need of the healthcare workers by putting such an emphasis on digital tools? And uh, well, joining me in a, in a discussion or dialogue about this are four experts from different backgrounds. Uh, we are all Dutch, so we're talking in English, which is not our native tongue. So uh, apologies for that already, but I hope you enjoy the discussion. Uh, and first up after me is uh, Marcel Kerkhoven. And Marcel is uh, well, uh, completely capable of introducing himself. So I'm going to uh, give the floor to Marcel now. Thanks, Eger, for uh, inviting me for this session. Um, I'm a general practitioner in a small town in uh, the eastern part of Holland, the most beautiful part, I might say. Um, and uh, your first question was, do I encounter digital nemesis in my practice or in my surroundings? And I see it on, on three different kinds of levels. Um, uh, the first is that um, the most uh, innovations uh, are introduced like a prodigy of uh, getting all the things done that I need to have done, to have, have been done in my practice. Uh, and I must think about uh, the bullet train running on all tracks. So the basic is still not working for me in my pra daily practice. Uh, and one of the, the main issues for the coming decade is, in my point of view, is getting the information at the, at the, at the right time, at the right place. And that's not about uh, uh, tensions, measurements, or all kinds of other data, but getting my information at the right time, at the right place. And that's still not working properly. Proper, pro properly. And the other one is that so it's... So you've, seen quite, uh, you've, seen, quite some you've seen quite some technology uh, coming towards you, yeah. uh, which is fascinating, of course. But then you say, hold up. First, we have to work on the basics, the basic tracks, as you said, before we can let the bullet train go over it. Yeah. And Why? in, in, in uh, um, the next stage about innovation, the, the, it's, it's not adding valuable value, but it's more like an addiction for the most uh, people working in innovation. And uh, the side effect of that is that uh, co-workers, me uh, as well, are falling behind in all those innovation uh, think, uh, talk and uh, more, uh, uh, especially my patients as well. So uh, it's, it's creating digital uh, dyslexia or digital... Uh, um, uh, in health, uh, there is um, people who are, are the haves and have money and are well educated and are overall more healthy. There's a large portion of our population who is less educated and are not as uh, keen in getting uh, all the digital, digital help and are falling behind. And then we are creating a more uh, a big country. We're creating a wide gap between the people that actually can follow technology or can use technology and those that cannot. Thank you very much for your translation. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So you, you recognize uh, uh, at least my anxiety about uh, digitization not not really uh, addressing yes, the need I, of the I, I was very glad of reading your digital nemesis and your, your, um, your comments on it. Um, and it uh, helped me to fall back to the medical nemesis of uh, Ivan Ilyich, who I read in the early days of my um, medical uh, study. Yeah, a few years ago. A few years ago, yeah. 
Well, thanks. Uh, we'll come back to you uh, later on in the discussion. Um, um, next up, uh, Jacqueline. So, um, well, Hi. you're going to introduce yourself as well, but I invited you here because you are really focusing on addressing the need of the healthcare workers. So that sounds very simple, but is that actually the case? It is simple, but we're not doing it. <laughs> so that's uh, <laughs> the, the problem is simple, but the solution it's more wide. But I, in, in, I'm Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline Oginko. I'm founder of The Future of Care, and I worked in... Uh, healthcare innovation for the last 20 years uh, and I see the same problem evolve the, the whole time just like Marshall said and I think uh, we're not addressing the real problem and we're not solving the real problem uh, not the problem of the employees and people that work in healthcare they have to it has to make their work better and it's worsening and all the people in innovation, they are going, the gap is going to get bigger instead of smaller. And my goal in life is to make the gap smaller. And it's in my, I think it's very simple. You have to listen to the employees. You have to address their problems. And together with all, with all, with all the people, you have to solve them with all, with AI, with techniques, with, um, um, you yeah, know, with everybody. But now yeah. in, in the, the, it's the, the gap is widening. Yeah. And what kind but of I, good I examples do you see in practice? I see in practice where there's a lot of happiness in people. If you listen to their problem, if you say, okay, what's your problem in actual work? Just like Marcel said, what in daily work are you, it's, it's completely different than we're innovating for. But if you ask them, what do you want? They want something else. They want a, a, an app that works. They want see the people they want to go to a house and see how can can i come in and what do i have to do not an in, enormous amount of data they want the, the data when they need it and that's not the mm -hmm. case and if you make steps you address the problem and say okay we're going to solve this together and then they they feel heard and they are going to use the, but the, the people who make the applications, they are not used to listen to the it's strange contradiction. They're not used to listen to the needs of the people that are going to use the tool. And that, that, that gap has to close. But as you see, yeah. uh, this, so the employees are not digital uh, morons or something like that. They are the ones you have to make the application for. So yeah. it's it's just the other way around. They say you have yeah. to train all the employees, but it's yeah, I think it's the other way around. So the for instance, if you're an employee and you get the technology in your practice, and someone tells you this is how you should use it, well, of course you use technology everywhere, right? If you're not at work, you're yeah. at home, so you use technology everywhere. So you're yeah. digital savvy. That should be, yeah. let's say, uh, the basics. The but then yeah, your digital the safety yeah. and you know the, the practice of healthcare. So you are, yeah. you you should become Expert. the digital shaper of the of the future, and then technology yeah. can match the employees are the your views yeah. and yeah. your your dreams. Te nice. In technology, everything is possible. Everything yeah. is already invented. It's it's just the case we have to use it, and yeah. the employees yeah. are the one that gonna yeah. Great, thanks. Um, coming back to you as well later on, uh, moving on to Erwin, Erwin Redeman, who's one of the people that is, well, keeps inspiring me for over the past, uh, well, we, we just re remember it, seven or eight years that we know each other. Uh, Co-founder of a uh, company, Neurocast, and, uh, well, they have been mentioned on CNN, I think, one or two weeks ago. Uh, a fascinating story to tell, and I think in this uh, respect of the discussion we're having now, especially because they started from a real need of a healthcare worker. So maybe Erwin, you can introduce yourself and also, well, the the, the journey you've been uh, along with Neurocast and your colleagues. Yeah, thank you very much, Erwin. Also, thank you very much, uh, Marcel and uh, Jacqueline uh, Sitzke to uh, to follow to uh, yeah, basically uh, strengthen me in my story. Uh, six years ago, um, I've got a background, by the way, in uh, innovation, uh, technology, and business economics. So not really medical um, background. And together with Levy, my co-founder, uh, we uh, have the MedTech company with an M and a capital T. And we're moving into a MedTech company with a capital M. 
Uh, six years ago, we uh, participated in Europe's largest hackathon against multiple sclerosis. And um, we participated because the mother of my uh, co-founder, Levy, suffers from MS. And he saw that every time that she had a bad day, she had troubles uh, managing uh, electronic devices like smartphones. So uh, we came up with the idea of uh, removing the keyboard of your smartphone by our intelligent keyboard. And that allows us to look at keystroke dynamics data, to sensor, uh, look at sensor data and activity data. And all this data uh, over uh, 12 medical, medical publications at the moment, we um, validated our technology so we can turn digital interactions. Yeah, so you hold your smartphone 80 times a day and all the data coming in, and there's millions and millions of data points, we turn that into meaningful um, yeah, uh, information for um, yeah, the healthcare professionals. And one of the things is, and that is, is intriguing what Marcel said and also what uh, Jacqueline said, is the day we won the hackathon over 22 international competitors, we uh, said three things that are paramount in our DNA. The first thing, it has to be unobtrusive. You didn't ask to have multiple sclerosis. So, um, yeah, bring technology to the market that is really unobtrusive. The second thing is that privacy should be guaranteed. With all this data, uh, yeah, you really have to be, be, make, make it comfortable for people to use it, uh, respecting the privacy. And the third thing is it should be available for everyone. Well, that's from the technology part. So that is the, the quest that we gave ourselves in developing the product. The next step is reciprocity. So if you bring technology to the market, there has to be reciprocity, but for all stakeholders. So um, basically patients should, should see what, what they benefit directly. Uh, and also the stakeholders like uh, Marcel as a treating physician uh, or neurologist, uh, you, it, it shouldn't be a high burden for you to use the technology. So, and I, I want to leave it at, uh, leave it uh, here for the moment. Uh, but so it's about reciprocity. So, what do you gain as a stakeholder in the chain? And the third thing, uh, for technology providers, basically respect the privacy, lower the burden, the threshold to use it, and make it available for everyone. I go back so to you. you. Is it, yeah, thanks, Erin. So the word unobtrusive, right? So it's it's not a burden in using it. That's that's of course something that is sounds like a dream to most healthcare workers. So a technology <laughs> is being put forward for a patient or a healthcare worker, and you have actually there's no, nothing you nothing changes for you in the use of your oh. well workflow or your in this case device or smartphone. Nothing changes in the way you interact with your environment, but still you gain well, data, information, and knowledge, because in the background, something is actually gaining wisdom from, from this. Yeah, so I can give this the shortest demo of high technology uh, ever, and that's basically showing you this. <laughs> it is your smartphone. So it's one minute, yeah. uh, install our keyboard, set and forget, continue with your life, use your smartphone like you always did, and in the back, in, in the back we gather all the data, and we turn that into meaningful with our machine learning uh, algorithms, et cetera, into meaningful uh, uh, yeah, data for your, uh, your physicians. Thanks. Well, coming back to you again uh, later. Um, Sietzke, last but not least, um, first, please introduce yourself. But then I would always already like to put forward a question in a sense that, um, well, we spoke about it already a bit with the previous uh, speakers, but I sometimes have the feeling that technology is some kind of hammer looking for nails. Yeah. Uh, do you recognize that? <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Sietzke Rohi. Thank you for the invitation. I have a background. I'm trained as a radiologist and I've been working as a radiologist for seven years until uh, last year. And now I'm focusing on the uh, creating awareness about future, on future skills for doctors by hosting a podcast, giving keynotes and um, organizing masterclasses, because I think it's uh, important that we, I think Jacqueline is right, we shouldn't train uh, um, employees from healthcare to learn how to talk, but we should train the industry to learn how to listen. And yeah. uh, what you see is about the hammer. It's um, 
And what you see is that there's a big hammer. And um, uh, the thing is that in uh, radiology, the, uh, we, they were looking for uh, how to use algorithms. So they developed algorithms and then they were searching for ways to use it. Uh, instead of the other way around. So what you get now is that in some hospitals, I recently, uh, this week, I talked to a radiologist. He said, I have this uh, AI application and it uh, detects blood on CT brain scans, but sometimes it gives me only problems. Uh, and I didn't have a problem previously because this is a problem I didn't have. So now they give me this algorithm. It's It's really nice and it's a way to learn how to um apply or how to work together with ai but this was not a problem i had so i think it's important with uh to to start from the point like the initiative of neurocast i think it's also a way to empower patients but it's also a way to uh start from the, the problem and not to say well uh, um and, and I think uh, uh, when we do that, then more doctors will get engaged. Because now the thing is, uh, Marcel was uh, talking about the group that is falling behind in his patients, but it also happens in healthcare uh, employees, because there are a lot of doctors who don't know anything about AI. And there are doctors, especially in radiology, that know quite a lot of from AI. And um, actually so, so much that they are... Um, uh, leaving the Netherlands and, and, and now uh, uh, working in the Mayo Clinic as an AI radiologist. So um, I think that's also can be a, a brain drain for the Netherlands. So I think it's important that we, um, uh, but what I, what, I, what I do in creating awareness is I, I think it's important that uh, uh, healthcare professionals realize that the way they work now, they are not aware of the way they make decisions every day. So first they have to become aware, how do I make decisions every day? How do I learn from what I do? Because there's a lot of data uh, available. And I think without, even without using AI, we can improve the way we learn. And if we know how we learn and improve the way we learn, and we then we are uh, open uh, to um, use uh, decision-making tools like AI. Yeah. I think that's an opportunity. So don't start with the hammer. No, don't Maybe start with the hammer. Maybe the hammer start can with the... hit someone some way. <laughs> Make sure that people uh, think, uh, look at the reality differently. Maybe by using the hammer to hit their head sometimes. Yeah. So what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, fascinating. So, in your respect, uh, I know you talk to a lot of experts also in the field and uh, medical specialists, uh, AI specialists. Do you think? Um, well, you alluded to, to that already a little bit. But what do you think? Is the doctor ready for tech? Is the tech ready for doctor? Where should, what, what? What do your colleagues think about those questions? Well, that's not really an incentive yet. And that's strange because the burden, I mean, the, the workload is increasing, increasing. There, there are many radiologists burn out, but in some way they don't realize that they have to work differently. It's like these, these, uh, um, these wheels, you know, this, this cartoon with these wheels that are uh, an, 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 like almost square, the square wheels. Square yeah. wheels. We are too busy uh for uh, uh to, to to take a step back and see what we can change to, in the way we work so uh, yeah. uh that's one problem and i uh, uh, in the in the medical field the uh, faculty of medicine or the residents of radiology they don't get any training in ai at this at this point of time so i'm really happy that like um in groningen now there uh, the, the the new dean will be a um an expert in uh, in AI, so I'm uh, really surprised by that, and I hope uh, he can um, he, he can implement some AI uh, <laughs> in yeah. the uh, medical uh, faculty. But, yeah. And I it's also ask for the people that want to look at that. Yeah, we are only say yeah, yeah, from uh, yeah. and um, from the Erasmus University. I asked two uh, large vendors, actually, some uh, managers uh, 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 who know what's going on. So 
that from the from the industry that provides the large CT scans and MRI scanners, and who also provide platforms for for AI. So I asked them yesterday, what do you think? Is the doctor ready? One of them said, company one said no, because because they are afraid that they become uh, overfluous so that they will not be needed in the future. And the yeah. other uh, general manager said, yes, they are ready, but the hospitals are not ready uh, due to all regulations. So there are two different answers from the industry. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So uh, maybe to you, Erwin, yeah. is, is, are, are people ready for your product? What do you see there in the uptake of the usage of, of your Keystroke Dynamics magic? Yeah, so so I think it's really interesting. Um, as a uh, business, I studied economics and it's all about technology push and demand pull. Uh, and I think that uh, I, I listen very carefully to what Siska says. I think that she's right. There should be more... Uh, um, yeah, more emphasis on technology uh, by design because it is one of the production uh, uh, yeah, f f factors. Uh, but um, I also think that we as technology providers should make it easier to use. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so uh, for instance, we are working uh, uh, with extreme intelligent or uh, artificial intelligent uh, scientists at the moment. They come from aerodynamics, by the way. A complex dynamic mm -hmm. systems and people also being the complex dynamic systems but we have a whole group basically looking at how can we uh, uh, have all this data turn into a single figure or a single um, yeah, uh, number uh, to make it more easier uh, uh, so so to get all the, the complexity basically from the healthcare professional yeah. So, and then to make sure that this this one this one number actually helps people make decisions in day to day practice, or actually supports them yeah. in their well, yeah. patient contact or communication with patients and so on. Yeah, and 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 also make it easier. So, for instance, we have uh, the electronic patient dossiers in the Netherlands, and 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 make it easy accessible through these uh, dossiers. And so that yeah. that uh, because uh, funny thing is I was uh, talking to my own uh, doctor and he said, well, Erwin, I really like what you do. And he opened a closet and he had over 30 different devices in his closet. <laughs> he says, I got, I got so much information, so, so much uh, technology uh, and, 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 and basically, yeah, I, I, I really don't know what to do with it. So, uh, yeah. so I think. That's also uh, one of the yeah one of the things that that we as technology providers should solve. Yeah, and then the the risk is that we lose these people that are well interested in technology because you don't get thirty devices by just <clears throat> waiting what drops on your doormat. But if you if you in the end do nothing with it or you see no added value in the usage of these devices, then you become sign some kind of well um, well you, you uh, lose it's, your it's, belief it's, in technology. It's even worse, Egge, because companies like Neurocast, we are forced to go to the United States. So we are looking, we already have a Boston-based uh, office because the Dutch, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the whole Dutch investment community and the whole, uh, yeah, the whole ecosystem is not ready to uh, host yeah. people, uh, high tech companies like Neurocast. Yeah. For me, that's also a fascinating, but also frustrating part about your story that well, if I if I mention your story to uh, even to an audience of neurologists, then it, it, I'm happy if some people know your example. But uh, you were highlighted on CNN a few weeks ago, so <laughs> apparently <laughs> there are people like your idea, but uh, back home it's not really uh, well, not really adopted yet. Yeah, losing and, and losing it, your belief. Can I can I move on to Marcel for one second? Uh, sorry, Erin. Uh, Marcel, uh, we we spoke in another context uh, yesterday. We had a nice dinner together with uh, some other colleagues, and uh, you, you 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 mentioned to me that well, talking about technology in in the medical practice is something that well we've been doing over the past few years, and more and more are you well stepping back from technology? You're you're saying okay, it's not about the technology, and you, you what what happened in your journey there? Because a few years ago you were really deep diving into all kinds of standardization tools ai and so on and so forth and now you're saying okay maybe we should uh, st take a step back 
Yeah, the, the, the funny thing is I'm still a tech Chevy. Uh, I've got 40 apps on my iPhone doing all kinds of things. But um, as a GP, uh, I'm, I'm working in a network. And instead of the, the examples Rosie says around uh, radiology, it's a high data uh, part of healthcare where you can do AI and do amazing stuff. But when I translate it to my practice as a GP, most part of uh, most thing most things that I do is uh, communication, and it's not data driven. And um, we have to do some uh, extra steps before we get to the data driven part of my practice. And perhaps it's mm. uh, uh, so when we are talking about AI, I think it's good to, and that's what I like about uh, what uh, Sietse says about our um, adaptive skills and our skills as a working profession that we have got to work and in our education uh, that system that, that, that the world is changing and then how do you translate it in, 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 in asking the, the, the ICT partners to, to develop non-intrusive things like uh, Erwin does. And I see that, that we, we uh, when we work with ICT, it's always uh, around uh, a focus about the, around one disease or one part of our healthcare system. But I work in a network and in, in the network mm -hmm. sense, uh, all the application doesn't match together. And that's mm -hmm. more and more coming becoming a burden. And then, you yeah. know, what does drive me of what why do I drift to the other part? It's more a social thing. How do yeah. we connect to each other as social workers and co workers in the medical profession in the things we need to do it properly around the patient? And then you come up with different kinds of problems and who are asking different kinds of solutions uh, who are not yeah. nearly addressed by the innovation uh, hackathons uh, at this point. Yeah. Am I clear? So, uh, the technology is not, not, not strengthening your, let's say, key interest in your, your profession. It's not strengthening th this. It's actually uh, hampering you <clears throat> to do what you do best. And then, of course, you uh, feel a disconnect. And, and, and when, I, when I hear our minister about uh, we've got uh, uh, not enough co-workers co in, in the near future to do, keep up the healthcare system in, in the Netherlands, uh, then the, 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 the leap forward is we've got to digitalize more, uh, but it's not, uh, then, it, then the, the drive to do that is more of verschaling. Uh, 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 I don't know the, the, the English word for it. Um, it's, uh, it's not getting better healthcare to, to the people, but it's making it, it's, uh, it, it less worse. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's creating more distance between me as a as a doctor with my patients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah sorry. Yeah. So okay. well, maybe to so less uh, personalized. But I still believe yeah, in AI, and, and when when it it helps me uh, in in the near future in creating a dashboard with all the data points and all the data who is available on a social scale around the context of my patients and uh, the, the the things they have uh, uh, in the medical record. I think when, when that, that uh, did some experience, experiments with my data sets and, and uh, public data, I believe that we can do better things, but it's still not, uh, the groundwork is not ready for it. Yeah. yeah. Siski, you wanted to respond? You, uh, you, you reacted to something? No, it, no uh, uh, I mean, I hope that uh, uh, when using data in a way that we can personalize medicine, but then when I hear Marcel talk, it's depersonalizing <laughs> yeah. uh, in this stage. Um, yeah. But um, well, I agree with Marcel. But what I, I there's one thing, maybe only one thing. Uh, I agree with our healthcare minister Kuipers is that I think we can improve the quality of healthcare by uh, cooperating better because we have like. Uh, we do not learn enough from the neighbor hospital. That's what I, uh, and I, I was a freelance radiologist. So I worked in a lot of different hospitals 
uh, also in the beautiful town Marcel lives in. It's 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 a beautiful uh, beautiful town, and it has a, a a nice atmosphere in the hospital. But what you see is that they they are too busy to learn from each other, or they think, well, I invented my own wheel, or so we we have to improve the way we learn. And I think the everything that's available right now, that like all communication techniques, and they're all everything uh, uh, hampers all the time. I mean, the electronic healthcare records and using faxes and then scan the fax and call this digital, digitalization, is this, that's not true. But it's, I mean, I think we can uh, uh, learn and improve healthcare quality by uh, maybe putting aside some egos from doctors and say, okay, I'm going to send this patient to you because you're the expert or I'm going to call you because... Uh, uh, you know more than me and we have to learn and cooperate. But that's also something to do with the, the way the, the healthcare is financed, of course. And an opportunity for a new cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I see an opportunity yeah, for a new cartoon, that's, reinventing that's, the, the square wheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said the, the something about the training right? the doctors? Oh, sorry, yeah. This yeah is, the, uh, it's sorry. about learning. Uh, I'm, I'm completely with Sitske. It's about how you learn. What do you learn to healthcare professionals? How do they learn? And how they don't only learn till they, they're 22 and then they're going to do the, the same thing for the next 20 years like it's now. Uh, they, they have to learn uh, how to learn from each other, but from themselves. And what do you see in in the things you see, you saw last year, last two, two years, three years ago, and what do you learn about it and how you can share it with the world? I think that's what we have to do. But we're not learning. I, I come from a home care, a, a, a large home care organization, and we are not learning from ourselves. As The, the, the learning is, is, is flat. So we're not used to learn the plan, do, check, act on ourselves. We're not going to do that. So there has yeah. to be now a, a, a I think that's what Sitsuke addresses the same. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Thank you. There, there is, by the way, a huge um, disruption going on in the United States at the moment. Uh, we are talking uh, to, for instance, uh, Walmart, Walmart, Amazon. And they're setting up hundreds and hundreds of um, retail uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, facilities to... Uh, to do the to, to do the do the, 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 the low level um, healthcare services. So there is a disruption going on. So from a f fully different um, uh, than than the traditional uh, players in the healthcare. So that that's one thing that I see. The other thing that I see is Mercy Virtual Center, where you've got a hospital that's really one hundred percent virtual. Yeah, so they 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 treat they don't see patients anymore. So um, and and so these two things. Uh, so it is like uh, we can look at doctors, but we can also look at the system. We can back up a little bit and look at the system, and to see how is healthcare provided to people, and is the way that we how we provide healthcare to people still the same uh, ten years from now? Because uh, I highly respect radio radiologists. Uh, uh, and I think that there will always be work for specialists, but I think that uh, a lot of things can be done far more efficient by uh, using traditional retail uh, channels. And that's, that is maybe a blunt, um, blunt remark, but I think uh, that we can keep on looking at how we are organized today, but we can also look at organizing it in a different way. Do you think that then fits the need of the well? If if the big players are moving towards that uh, direction, they uh, apparently have some hunch that there is a need. The, uh, and we talked about the medical nemesis, so don't push technology there, but see what the need is. Apparently, there is a need there at the citizen, the consumer, the patient to have more yeah. access or better access or different access to, let's say, low-level healthcare knowledge. Uh, if you suffer from multiple sclerosis, uh, you have roughly 12 minutes a year with your neurologist. Yeah. So what you see is that one of my competitors, uh, I've got one serious competitor, and th that company is being bought by Amazon. And they uh, will use low-level uh, tools to basically keep on monitoring people and give them a comfortable feeling that someone is watching over them. 
uh, with respect for privacy, etc. So, so it is. It is. We 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 can look from inside, but we can also step away a little bit and look at yeah. uh, how we could reorganize healthcare uh, in general. Yeah, and not everything. Yeah, and of I course, think there not could everything. be a, a match between technology and the need here, right? So. Jacqueline, I think you want to respond, and then we move on to Marshall, because uh, I see you unmuted a few times, but um, I'll give it first, Jacqueline. Yeah. Yeah, you can go to Marshall, but I, 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 I like what Arvind says, because as a patient, I want an answer on my question, and the best answer. And the, the question is, if the, is the general, I have a nice bond with my general practitioner, but does she know she, she knows everything? I don't, know, I don't know she knows everything. And if uh, AI tells me if I have, have a mold, I make a photo of it, and the, the application says you have to go to the general provision. It's okay, and I trust that because and and that's the, I think that's what Erwin addresses. You want an answer. My problem is I want an answer, and I want a, the best answer. Well, I like what Erwin says about thinking outside in instead of inside out. Um, uh, and I think uh, what Siska uh, addresses about our um, education system and how we respond to different um, types of innovation. Uh, you, you mentioned the hammer looking for nails, but in my practice and my co-workers, I see a lot of uh, screwdrivers being uh, given and used as a hammer. <laughs> Uh, so um, there is a lot of digital uh, uh, mismatch uh, in using. Uh, so we we are not keen of uh, accepting that digitalized world is changing our way of working with patients. And yeah. if we don't acknowledge that and we don't address that and we don't discuss it with each other, we still are going to use the the screwdriver of Aaron. As a as a hammer, uh, if we are not careful <clears throat> enough, and uh, yeah. yeah, that that's that's that that's the main thing that I want to to be part of of how to 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 get my coworkers uh, more digital digitalized, sanitized. How do you say uh, uh, yeah. that they they are more keen of uh, acknowledging that their way of working should might change and need to change. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, of... It's like Dr. Phil. You cannot change what you don't acknowledge. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. And it's it's also related to personalization, right? As a consumer, we're used to personalization yeah. almost everywhere where we have digital interactions or also in other ways and forms. We like to be addressed as a person and with our needs and so on and so forth. And technology can help with that. So yeah. uh, if you need a screwdriver, you get a screwdriver. If you need a hammer, you get a hammer and so on and so forth. And... Um, but that also comes back to what's the means and what's eh, digitization or technology is a means to an end. And the end is having personalized interventions or communication channels and so on and so forth, uh, be it in your uh, retail channel or uh, online or just face-to-face -face with your general practitioner. That's the personalization we all strive for. And then technology can, in some contexts, assist there. Uh, and we should not yes. flip... Uh, confuse the means uh, and an end there, Erwin. It is very funny that I was talking in uh, Silicon Valley to one of the biggest um, uh, venture capitalists. And after a couple of minutes, the guy said, um, Erwin, 10 years from now, which question do you want to answer? And basically, that was a really nice question because, and all of a sudden, uh, I said, well, how are you today? And that, 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 that's a fully different approach. So that, that, that's basically, and I'm also looking at uh, your article uh, again, uh, Egge. This, this, this is about you as a patient, and this is about how are you today means a lot b uh, by who is asking the question. And if the question is, for instance, your, your brother or your wife, your kid, you can provide him or her with information that basically helps you answering that question and taking care of you, then it's not about you as a patient anymore, but it's you as a person that basically yeah, wants to organize his life. And I think that, that overall, that's, that is what technology should be focusing on. 
So, 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 yeah, look at people and look at, because it's all about instruments, it's all about specialists, it's all about technology, it's all about, and you know, um, I don't want to, it, it, it's, it's nearly a little bit corny, eh, the gold, golden circle of Simon Sinek, but please, please look at it again, because I, I basically two or three times a year, I look at the, 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 yeah, the golden circle of Simon Sinek, the why, the how, the what. It's so simple, but it's so difficult to implement. Yeah, but you emphasize on a way that. how technology can humanize uh, 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 healthcare again, or more. yeah, yes. yeah. So, so it's it's it, it's all about uh, uh, as 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 has already been said. It's uh, you coming off uh, coming from high school, then go to university, then you learn how to be uh, to ha- how to be a neurologist or a radiologist. And then you keep on doing the, the things you did uh, for 20 or 30 years. Uh, you buy yourself a boat and you, yeah, you, you enjoy your pension. pension. That's not me. That's, that's Jacqueline. That's amazing. Yeah. Because we spent so many, I like 12 minutes, you said, but we spent so many, I, I mean, I spent hours in, on uh, uh, performing of uh, or reporting MS uh, MRIs. So maybe we should involve patients in more parts uh, that yeah. are being... And they uh, see it. They see, yeah. Because yeah, that they see you. Yeah. In the radiology department to uh, report all those uh, scans for these patients. And I think that maybe that's something we, uh, we could add. We can... Um, Change. But I liked, yeah, I liked the first comment Marshall uh, said. It's about, it's all about the relationship. It's about human interaction with each other. So I think that's, mm-hmm. um, and I would address that. That is, you have to do. That's what you said. As a patient, you don't see what it, what what people do no. with you, <laughs> with your data. They do, they do loads with your data. They, everybody sees it, and you have no clue. You go to the doctor, and they say it's okay, and you go. That's the the, the experience yeah. of Aaron. Yeah, maybe that should be that would. Yeah, and the, the, it's a strong question. How are you today? Right? It it, it relates to the the real the core of a human being as a as a patient as a person, but also yeah. as a colleague. Right? And I know Jacqueline from your practice working in home care uh, healthcare, you managed in an institution that was not really well thinking along these lines to get people thinking along these lines. Right? To really have the yes. healthcare workers themselves. Uh, formulate the question and also uh, being in charge, so to say, of coming up with a solution, solution or an approach. Yeah. yeah. Um, and paraphrasing, let's say Barack Obama said, "Yes, we can." You you always say, "Yes, we do." We always uh, we do. Yeah. If people yeah. think uh, innovation is hard, we just do it. Could yes. you share one example or uh, lessons learned from uh, well transforming an organization in that direction? That's <laughs> it's very now. That's it's you have to have a board that is ready for it because your whole organization is going to ask questions they have never been asked. And, uh, and what you see is that in the organization, all the employees, they, they don't know anything about artificial, artificial. They only know their, only know their own uh, EPD. They, that's the world they work in. The workflows in their head are just the, the workflows in the EPD. So they have to. You have to get rid of that uh, mm-hmm. as as a as a frame, and you say, okay, what's your problem? What do you want to solve? And then mm-hmm. you're gonna do with together with the whole team, so everybody involved, and then you make the first uh, solution yourself. So you see what you can do with yourself, and then you see you have loads of. Um, uh, energy going up and then you can do it and uh, we did a digital colleague we did RPA we did a, a movement exercise instead of full protection mm. technology because uh, that's a, a, a big thing in the Netherlands full protection technology they say you have to wear a, a, an airbag and then it's exploding and then uh, you don't ha- you're not um, uh, <laughs> but you have to solve the problem that people are not active anymore when we go there as a home care provider, but yeah. because we say you have to sit in a, in, a, in a chair because otherwise you fall. So that's a different approach and that we did in the organization. And that's, I think Erwin addresses it good. It's not about patients care. It's about people that want to yeah. live. And did you, did you notice that people were uh, asking more questions then? about how things yeah. are now and 
how things should be and because this is the start of learning right we talked about learning to learn yeah they they, they question only learn everything by asking questions. They, yeah they asking questions to to the people that made the the epd so that's and they were not used to the questions oh there's an employee there's an healthcare worker asking questions now this just we do it like this always and so it's nice to see that the the people uh, in the industry they have a look at the organization the ministry had a look at our organization and they saw a, a completely different uh, field because they don't know what the field is themselves so yeah. they make policies and they've never worked in the environment and the people that addresses the the questions and tell them I, this is what so we, the people are inspired by the way of working as well yeah. so i think that's the this, we have to collaborate together to make the be better yeah so that's that's the reason why we always talk about people with ms and not yeah. patients with ms that's one thing the other thing is that we have predictive models already in place that outperform three out of the six uh, measures called standards that are being used in um, uh, in MS. We can outperform that basically by looking at your data, uh, meaning that the next step will be that I can provide you with that compound score, uh, that one figure, yeah. uh, let's call it energy level, whatever. And then I can help you basically First of all, I, I can be your virtual car, virtual guardian angel uh, looking for you, and but also provide you with input like if you have a very busy week, uh, and I see that your energy is a little bit low, uh, I can I can basically help you in answering the question how are you today, and that and that that doesn't need any uh, neurologist or doctor or whatever uh, for that specific part, and it will not replace it will never replace the industry. But but it will help you organize your life better as a, as as a person suffering from MS. Great. Or Alzheimer's. So we're going to move towards wrapping up, but uh, maybe thinking about a possible final question to you guys. Um, we this is going to be viewed by many people around the world. Is there something that you would like to ask them or uh, pass on to them or? activate them in, in a sense so think about that for a minute um because i'm going to uh, come back to the four of you um and uh, before going there i would like to quote uh even elites in his medical nemesis article he said again this is his, his idea was if you look at everything through a medical lens it becomes medical um and he said that society which can reduce professional intervention to the minimum will provide the best conditions for health and um, I like to have that view also with digitization. And I like the non-obtrusive part of Neurocast. If you ha can have technology in the background, non-obtrusive, and you don't feel the intervention, but you feel being cared for, um, that's the best condition for health, I think. But having said that from my side, um, maybe just from my, for me from left to right, that's first Marcel, Jacqueline, Sietzke, and then Erwin. Is there something that you want to give as a question or a remark to the, the people watching this session? Now, first of all, I liked the discussion with each other and the dialogue. Um, and I hope that people who are listening to our podcast or videocast would keep in mind that um, creating a solution might also create problems for other people and other co-workers. So keep that in mind and be more uh, adaptive and plan to act and evaluate on your, uh, on your uh, innovation. On that part, is it if is is it creating more problems or is it helpful to adding value in in the patient's uh, uh, perspective? Thank that, you. That, that question would be nice to to keep in mind. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Uh, I've got a quote I I, um, I always uh, use, and it's uh, in champagne bubbles go up. So if you want to, uh, that's from the, 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 the energy is going up from the, uh, the, the bottom. Oh, perfect. That's a nice uh, image to keep in mind. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we're recording this in the morning, uh, thinking about champagne is always a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. <laughs> Seems good. Well, then I will use a quote as well. It's from the book of uh, Adam Grant, Think Again. Uh, please get involved in AI. If you think it's too hard for me, it's too complicated, it's not. And we need a diverse team of healthcare professionals, people, 
everybody to get involved. Otherwise we get bias in algorithms and we don't want that. So we need you. And the quote is, if knowledge is power, then knowing what you don't know is wisdom. Beautiful. Thank you. Erwin, not, last but not least. Yeah, so so I want to really want to be simple. Like, uh, don't look at pages, but look at people. Perfect, perfect. Thank you all so much for joining, Marcel, Jacqueline, Sitzke, and Erwin. It was a pleasure talking to you, even though it was not our native tongue. I think we shared valuable insights with each other, and hopefully the viewers like it. Uh, so let us know what you think about this session, and uh, well, we'll be in touch on a later notice. Bye bye. <laughs>